and I'm a clinical nurse specialist on AEDS and a member of LabSME Group. We understand that timely and reliable lab results are crucial to complex patient care. Did you know that there are common lab labeling mistakes we all make that actually delay labs being run and results being finalized? Today, I'm going to show you the proper method to label your tubes as well as highlight some common errors we make that may be causing these delays. Step one is to examine the label closely. You want to make sure that the barcodes are clear, that there are no cutoffs on either sides, and there are no smudges or writing over the barcode. Here the label on the left is run perfectly. The label on the right, however, the printer is miscalibrated so it cut off along the right side. And again, the one on the left is the correct label, and the one on the right is faded with a line through the barcode. The order for filling your tubes is as follows. You should always be filling your blood cultures first. Then you're going to do what we draw our coags in, light blue, followed by either a red or, green, or red or gold, a green, your lavender tops, gray, and then any other colors you need. Also listed here are the manufacturer recommendations for number of inversions. When you're filling your tubes, it's always important to use a vacutainer. Don't use a blunt tip syringe and don't take the cap off. After you're done filling your tubes, you want to make sure that you're inverting as the manufacturer recommended. And when in doubt, just invert eight times. Eight is great. To properly label a tube, you're going to peel off the top backing of your lab slip. You're going to line up the left side of the label and the writing with the cap of the tube. Here you can see the last name, system test only, is lined up with the lavender cap of this tube. A good trick is to place it directly over the manufacturer label. You want to make sure you leave enough distance between the cap and the bottom of the tube. Now you're ready to send your labs to lab control. Remember, one patient, one bag, no exceptions. You're probably wondering why labeling your labs is so important. What you may not know is after the tubes leave your floor, they go to lab control and they get put in a rack similar to this. Some common mistakes that we make lead to delays in lab results. So, so here is a perfectly labeled tube. When you slide it into the rack, it fits in the window so you can read the entire barcode. These are some common labeling mistakes we make when sending our tubes to lab. The barcode itself could be upside down. The label could be put on twisted so you can't read the whole barcode. The label is too low and cut off on the bottom. There's writing over the barcode so it can't scan. Or the label when it printed was cut off and the barcode was cut off. Ever wonder what happens to your lab specimens when they leave your floor? Let's go talk to our friends in the lab to find out more about it. Now we're up in lab and the first stop for your specimens is lab control. Stefan's here to tell you a little bit about what happens. So when the specimens are sent from the floor, we receive the tube in lab control and we will open the tube, take out the specimen bag, and then we'll check to make sure that there's only one patient per bag, and then from there we'll proceed to logging the sample in and checking for any pre-analytical errors. So from here, we check to make sure that any duplicate tests are canceled and the appropriate tests are collected in the correct container. Now any green top or red top tubes will be spun down before being sectioned over to the core lab. And this is why it takes longer to process green tops and red tops as opposed to purple tops and blue tops which are sent directly to the core lab. Now we're in core lab and the samples have finished processing and lab control. This is where the mislabeling issues create turnaround time problems and workflow issues. Samples are placed in a rack and then onto the instrument. These barcodes contain information with which patient belongs to which tube and what test is to be run on which tube as well. When the barcode reader scans each rack, it is only reading in the middle area of the rack here. So if there is a twisted label or if there's writing on the label or if the label is placed too low, there's going to be a barcode error and the instrument is not going to know what to run on what patient and what tube. So now the, sample, now the sample rack with correctly and incorrectly labels are placed onto the instrument. And the instrument is started. Once the instrument starts, the barcodes are read. And then after that, the samples are aspirated 
and the tests are run onto the instrument and, and approximately 15 minutes later the results are ready. So now the processing is completed on the samples we put on the instrument. The correctly labeled sample has been reported, however the incorrectly labeled samples need to be relabeled and rerun on the instrument which adds an additional which adds an additional 15 minutes to the turnaround time, doubling the amount of time that it would normally take to run the sample. Not only is uh, the turnaround time increased, but also the workflow is disrupted as well, which is why it's important to correctly label the samples. Thank you for your attention to the video about how a specimen becomes a result, and if you have any questions about the information on the video, feel free to come up to Farley 7 for additional information. And remember, when we work collaboratively with our friends in the lab, we can greatly impact patient care.